Hey folks, welcome back to the Edupedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta and today again we are continuing with the chapter Audit and Auditor. Right, so so far we have done with the various provisions of section 139. It was a long section but we have covered the entire section in detail in the previous few lectures. Right, so there we have seen the appointment of the first auditor, the subsequent appointment, the appointment in case of the casual vacancy, what is the auditor supposed to do, right, the notice, the consent that the auditor gives and all those things are something we have already seen, right. The only thing remaining over there was the discussion of section 141 which is the qualification, disqualification, eligibility of the auditor. But that section will be picked up in the next lecture I suppose, right, because today we will be dealing with the next section which is section 140 which deals with the removal, resignation of the auditor and the special notice, right? So this is section 140. So what do we have in section 140 if we see? So first, we need to understand the procedure of the removal of the auditor, right? So there is an auditor in the company, but the company now decides that no, we think we are not going ahead with this auditor. But understand again, the removal will take place only when the appointment procedures have been completed. That means after section 139 has been completed, and the auditor has taken in the position as an auditor and started to work, then the question of removal of auditor comes into place, right? So auditor can be removed one in the AGM where there's no ratification, right? That is one thing that can be very easily taken forward. Do not ratify, the auditor is removed. But understand, you are trying to actually remove the auditor before the expiry of his term. When I say term, you can consider it to be five years, you can consider it to be one year as well because after every one year, he actually retires and his appointment is ratified. And after five years, he has to retire and reappoint, right? So ratification and reappointment are two different things. But now we are understanding that in the middle of the session or before the period of his expiry, before his period as an auditor expires, we would want to remove him or remove the firm. So what are the procedures available with the company? So to start with, the company would initiate it with a board resolution, right? So they would hold a board meeting and pass on a resolution in the board meeting of the directors with the majority votes that whether or not they want to remove the existing auditor and that too before the expiry of his term, right? And once the board approves it, that okay, yeah, we are planning to not remove it. So before taking the matter to the members, right, the board will also have to take an approval from the central government. Right? So they require a previous approval of the central government before getting ahead with the removal of an auditor. And after that, after the approval of the central government has been received, they move ahead by passing a special resolution. This is not a general resolution, not a general thing that is discussed in the general meeting. It is a very, very specific and a special case which will be discussed in the general meeting. And for this, maybe an extraordinary general meeting may also be need to be conducted. Right? So it's a special discussion, so we'll have to have a special resolution for this purpose. Right? Now we understand that, okay, the board will start with the initiation that yes, we have decided to remove. Then there has to be an approval by the central government and then the members. Now understand, we say that, okay, a prior approval is required. Do you think you just call up a central government and ask, hey, Mr. Central Government, could you please let us know, can we remove the auditor? No. There is a procedure behind that, right? So let us understand what is the procedure behind the removal of an auditor approved by the central government, right? And this will basically be covered up in the uh, in the rule, rule number seven, right? So procedures that we are required to follow to obtain the central government approval, right? What we need to do is we need to file an application to the central government and that application will always be filed in form ADD2. Right? And whatever be the prescribed fees as per central government, we also have to attach that fee. Right? Because understand, whether or not the central government will approve the deal is not a question. The point is, you are taking central government's time. You will be involving some of the officials to look into the matter and decide whether the approval has to be granted to you or not. Right? So the fees has to be there. Right? Then the application that you're making to the central government should have been made within 30 days of passing your board resolution. You cannot do say, okay, last year I passed a board resolution, now let me take an approval and call the members. No. 
take the decision in the board meeting you will only take the decision when there's an urgency of removing the auditor right then within 30 days you'll have to file this application to the central government seeking their prior approval for the same right and then the central government will take their own time and when the central government responds that okay the approval is granted you can go ahead with removing the auditor then within the next 60 days of receiving that approval from the central government, the board of directors will call for a general meeting, the general meeting of the members, right? So once the board has decided to remove, they'll take an approval from the CG. And when the CG has approved, they call for the members for a general meeting within the next 60 days and then pass a special resolution and then finally remove an auditor, right? But understand before you go ahead to remove the auditor, you will always have to give the auditor an opportunity of being heard. Right? That is something which is a must. So that is about the removal of how you remove an auditor. Right? Now what is the case of resignation? Right? If you look at the resignation, then it is the duty of the auditor who is resigning, who would file a statement in the prescribed form that yes, I would wish to resign. So you have a prescribed form for the same. Right? And that statement, that statement would contain certain elements. Right? So what would be the content of the statement? It should indicate the reason and all the other facts which are relevant to the case for the auditor to resign, right? So, the auditor will uh, write down in the statement that, yeah, this is the reason due to which I don't want to continue with the firm. This is my reason for resignation from the firm, right? And these are the facts that have taken place. Please note it down, right? And this statement that the auditor is filing will have to be filed with the company because, see, this is what has happened. I don't want to continue with you. And then you will also, the auditor will also file the same statement with the registrar. Let's say this has happened with me in the company. I have given a resignation, I have given an, a statement to the company as well. And this is for your reference, right? And in any case, if it is a government company, right, then you'll also have to go ahead with filing that same statement to the central government. I mean the CAG, Comptroller Auditor General, not the central government, right? Okay. And what will be the time limit for filing such a, a statement? It should be filed within 30 days from your resignation. So today I decide that yes, there is a problem and I cannot continue. So I type in a resignation letter and give it to the company. And then I start preparing the statement. This is the reason why I resigned. This is the reason. These are the facts that have taken place that forces me to resign. Right. And then you pass on all of those to the company registrar and CEG within 30 days of your resignation. Right. But what if you fail to file such a statement? They'll not know the reason, right? If you fail to file the statement, they will not know the facts that have taken place. They will not know the reason. And hence, you will be penalized with a minimum fine of 50,000 and the maximum fine of 5 lakh for not giving that statement, not affirming the reason and the facts of your resignation. Okay, so it's not very easy for you. Please keep in mind if you're retiring or resigning from any company, please make the statement and forward it to the ROC as well and the CAG, right, if you are a government company. Now that is about the removal and resignation of the auditor, right? Now we see the next case of the special notice. So when do you think is a special notice required? Yes. When I talk about the special notice, this is a special notice that is given to the members for the next general meeting. So if it's a special notice, it would require some special facts or some special discussions, right? So a special discussion would actually be the removal of the auditor. That means there's a special notice which, which would be provided to all the members for not reappointing the retiring auditor. So the auditor who is retiring will not be reappointed, right? So what is the requirement of the special notice? It's something that we'll see. So first, why are you sending it is because you want to appoint a new auditor, right? And this new auditor will be any person other than the auditor who has just retired or the firm that you have just retired as an auditor, right? Or otherwise, if you do not have a new person, see, for example, what happens is ABC Limited, ABC uh, and Associates, were the auditor of the company. Now you think, oh, I think I would want to take up LMN. So what you do is, you give a special notice that listen, in this AGM, right, or in this general meeting that we are going to conduct, we are going to, it has to be AGM, they are appointed in the AGM. We are going to remove the retiring auditor and take in LMN because we want the audit to be conducted by LMN, right? Or in other case, if you don't have the name of LMN in your mind, but you are sure you don't want the audit to be conducted by ABC, then even that will be the cause of a special notice that you are expressly providing that the retiring auditor will not be reappointed. I don't know who will be appointed, but the retiring auditor will not be reappointed. So there are two cases. One, that you know who you want to replace that auditor with. 
Number two, you don't know, but you still don't want to continue with the same auditor, right? But understand, if there's a, this is the case where your ratification is taking place, but if the entire term is over, that that may be five years or ten years in whatever case, right? In, in the case of firm, it's ten years. In the case of an individual, it's five years, right? In the case of an individual, it's five. In the firm, it's five years as well because after five years, they are reappointed. So whatever be the scenario, five years or ten years, right? What you are supposed to do is that in this situation, anyways, the auditor is retiring. There's no ratification. There has to be reappointment. So if you don't want to reappoint the auditor, you don't have to give a special notice because the members who are coming in for the general meeting, right? They know that they have to appoint an auditor, either the same or someone else. But they have an agenda of appointing an auditor, right? Next, the copy to the retiring auditor. Yes. So whatever notice you are preparing. What you have passed a resolution that okay we are planning to remove the auditor. So you prepare a notice, special notice for the meeting, and you pass on to all the members. You will send a copy of that notice to the auditor as well. Auditor that is gonna retire, right? So that even come to him or come to that firm as a shock. Oh my God! I was here thinking that I would be reappointed, and they have already conspired against my reappointment. They have floated a notice. I don't even know, right? So. So that the auditor, the auditor doesn't get a shock, what does the company do is that the company will also send a copy of the same notice to the auditor, right? And then after the auditor has gone through the notice and understood that yeah, they are planning to remove me, the auditor will give his own representation, right? So the retiring auditor he is always entitled to make a representation against his removal. And listen, this is the reason why I should not be removed. Maybe there's a misunderstanding. Maybe this thing has been taken in some other way or whatever it is. But these are the reason why I should not be removed, right? And that should be in a reasonable length. It is not that you go on to write a thesis or an entire documentary, right? And that has to be given back to the company in a written form. And once you have given it back to the company in the written form, the auditor may also request to get it floated to all the members along with the notice, right? So this notice to the auditor is actually being given prior to the notice being sent to the members, right? So after a resolution is passed that okay, we are planning to remove this auditor. You send a notice to the auditor to make representation. If the auditor makes that representation within the given stipulated period of time, within a reasonable time, and you have the time and uh, the bandwidth to float the same with the notice to the members, you will do it. But if the uh, representation has come a little late and you are not able to do it, you will not. You are not forcefully required to refloat the representation itself. You can read read it out in the general meeting instead, right? Next, what would be the duty of the company when these things are done, right? So, duty of the company with respect to the representation is what we are going to see. So, the company will state all the facts that the retiring auditor has made a representation against his removal in the notice that the company is sending to the members. Along with the notice, that is the responsibility of the company to let them know. See, this is the representation made by the auditor. Please go through this as well, right? So, the company will send a copy of the resignation of the representation to every member. Right, but if in case the representation is received as late, the company is not mandatorily required to send the notice or to send the representation along with the notice. And if it is not sent because it is received late or because of some any other reason, then the auditor may require that the representation is read out in the meeting that will be conducted. Right. So if it is sent, then it is deemed they'll be reading it. If it is not sent, then the auditor can ask for. Reading out the entire representation in the meeting, and then a copy of that representation will also be filed with the registrar. That is the requirement, right? Because if it is not sent, the registrar will also not receive it. Then, then you will have to send a copy with the to the registrar that okay, this is the representation that is made by the auditor. Please keep this into your records as well. Okay with that? So now, when all these things have been taking place, right? You understand that you are giving the entire power. To the auditor to make representation. Now the auditor will never want to be removed. It's his business also, right? So the auditor may go ahead to any extent to write against the company or in his own favor in the representation, right? And if we say that, that yeah, it is mandatory for the company to circulate the representation, then it would impact the confidence of the shareholders in the company or the confidence of the members in the company. Right. So, what is the rescue that the company has? The company cannot decide by its own, right? Because if now, when you are when you are removing an auditor, it's a fight between the company and the auditor. The auditor will defend itself. The company will prove him wrong. 
the auditor will defend himself again, the company will prove him wrong again, right? Because the auditor is not limitless. So the auditor may be proved wrong and the auditor will also try to prove the company wrong. So it's a fight. And if we leave all the decision in the hands of the company, the company will see that, okay, if the representation is in company's favor, we'll float it. If it's not, we'll not float it, right? So who keeps that check? So just to maintain that check that nothing goes wrong, there is an intervention by the CLB, the company law board, right? So in case the company feels that no, the representation that is made by the auditor is not appropriate, the company will send the copy to the CLB, right? So CLB will say that, okay, the copy of the representation need not be sent out and the representation need not also be read in the meeting. If they are satisfied, that yes, this right has been abused by the auditor, right? Because the auditor maybe wanted some uh, needless publicity or wanted to defame the name of the company, right? And whatever be the cost of the company on such an application that is to, uh, to make that application that has been made to the CLB, right? That has to be paid by the auditor, right? Irrespective of the fact that he was not a party to that application which is made to the CLB. Right? Because understand, the company should not always be sending this application to the CLB. Yeah, if every time the auditor has to pay, the company, what happens to the company? Company sends an application, let's give it a try. What if CLB says no? Right? So, companies should be very conscious that, okay, yes, if the auditor is seen to be abusing the power or to or has written something that is defamatory to the company, then the company appeals to the CAG. And when, the CA, when it is proved that yes, the auditor was trying to do something like that, the fees have to be paid by the auditor. And the application that is made to the company law board, right, that may be made either by the company or by any other person who is claimed to be aggrieved by that representation which the auditor has made. When I say aggrieved, maybe somebody who has been defamed in that or maybe any, any other abuse that the auditor has made that impacts any individual, right? So either the company makes it or even if the company is not willing to make it because the company says, no, there has been nothing in my case. But one person comes up, no, 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 no. Listen, because of this, this, this thing written in that representation, I am being defamed. I need to protect myself. Give me the notice. Give me the representation. I'll send it to CLB. So that person can also forward it to CLB. So if we understand the crux, it is anybody who is aggrieved by the representation of the auditor can forward it to the CLB. Because generally who will be aggrieved, either the company on the whole or any particular individual from the company. And whosoever is, has the right to send the application to the CLB. And then it is on CLB to decide and bring out a fruitful conclusion to the entire application. So that is all about section 140. So we have seen the removal of the auditor. How is the auditor removed? First, decision taken by the board, approved by the central government and then approved by the members. And finally, the auditor is removed. So it's not a very easy task. Even before removal, an opportunity of being heard is given. Next is the resignation. In case of resignation, the auditor has to file the resignation, file in a statement of the resignation by the facts and the figures and why am I supposed to resign, send a copy to the ROC, to the CAG, to the company, right? And this has to be done within 30 days. If it is not done, he is penalized with minimum rupees 50,000 and maximum 5 lakhs. And that special notice is given in the case of an AGM when they are not planning to reappoint the retiring auditor. But in that case where the ratification was required, if the term is over, no special notice is required. Please keep this thing in mind. When will they give the notice? If they want to appoint a new auditor or they just simply want to remove this retiring auditor, not to reappoint, right? Then that uh, notice of the resolution will be sent to the auditor as well. Auditor will make representation. If representation is okay, they will float it if they have received it on time. If they haven't received it on time or if they find it, it's not okay, they will not float it. And if they're not floating it, they may read it, read it out in the general meeting. But if they don't find it to be okay, they find the auditor has abused the power and defamed somebody, they will make an application to CLB. CLB will decide whether or not they are correct. If they are correct, the auditor has to pay for that application and nothing will be read out. That is the crux of the entire section. Right? So by this, we come to an end of section 140. In the next lecture, we'll pick up with your most awaited topic, which is the qualification and disqualification of the auditors. Okay with that? So see you guys back in the next class. Until then, this is Abhinav Gupta signing off. Thank you and bye-bye. Take care.